Hey everybody, so um, I wanted to show you something that I stumbled on, right? Or well, something that YouTube recommended to me that I thought was pretty cool. Um, so one of my, a guy who I, uh, who I know from my friendly local game store, right? He, um, <clears throat> we were sitting and we were talking and, you know, we both like to run games at the game store and he's like, you run a lot of games. Like, where do you come up with your ideas? And I said, I think I said, like, have you tried, you tried stealing, you know, um, have you tried using chat GPT? Um, and then I think he said, you know, yeah, like I, a lot of times I have ideas for stuff and then like I'll start something and then I'll kind of get like some writer's block. Um, and I thought, well, you know, that's one thing that, ChatGPT is actually really good for, or um, I, uh, you know, I'm interested in this stuff, right? And then YouTube recommended me uh, pseudo write. So I'm going to show you like how I use this. Um, I'm inside my my Notion right now. Um, if you haven't heard me talk about Notion, you probably don't watch my channel. Um, I'll put something you know up here editor steve like put some links to some notion video up here um so notion is just you know it's a tool it's i use it to kind of organize my thoughts um like if i if i do have an adventure seed type type thing and then this was written by chat gpt um <clears throat> so i have a bit of a cold something going around but um so basically, I told ChatGPT, I'm like, hey, can, you know, I, I got this new game. I got Rivers of London. Um, it's, it's great. I love it. There is one published adventure. And it's, a, it's one of those IPs where they don't have a Miskatonic repository or a GM's guild or whatever where people can go and make third-party content and publish it. Like, there's no license like that right so so you know i'm kind of like racking my brain for ideas so i say chat gpt give me 10 scenario ideas for one shots and they're actually really good some of them are really good uh so i'll just show you like <clears throat> i just you know i just cut and paste one of them one of the ones that i liked onto um my notion um, so I just said, let's brainstorm some ideas for one-shot adventures for the new role-playing game Rivers of London from Chaosium. Can you write me 10 adventure ideas? Um, so I'm actually pretty impressed by these. Like, they sound good. Um, the unruly Thames. The river Thames has become unusually turbulent and the water elementals are causing havoc along its banks. The players must investigate the disturbance and discover the source of the elemental unrest while dealing with the angry spirits and magical creatures disrupting the city. That's good. I like it. Um, lost Spirits of the Underground. The ghosts of long-forgotten individuals who died in the London Underground are reappearing and causing disturbances in the subway system. The players must navigate the eerie tunnels, uncover the reason behind the spirits' return, and find a way to put them to rest. So, one of these, uh, one of these I liked. I think it was that one. I think it was the Lost Spirits of the Underground. So I said, um, I really like idea number two. Could you expand on that one for me and write me some plot points for what would happen along the way? Absolutely. Background. In the depths of the London Underground, restless spirits from various time periods have begun to reappear, causing disturbances and frightening commuters. The spirits are not malevolent, but seem lost and confused as if they're trying to fulfill some unfinished business you know, like, this is actually pretty, pretty good writing. Um, <clears throat> so, disturbances on the tube. I mean, they've done a lot of the heavy lifting for you already. Um, reports, sur uh, reports surface of strange occurrences in the London Underground. Witnesses speak of ghostly apparitions, chilling whipper whispers, flickering lights. Um, the British Museum contacts players suspecting magical involvement. So, you know, already, like, 
Oh, you just kind of have to, it's like you're you're playing Mad Libs, you know, with um, Chat GPT at this point. I think it's like they've they've done most of the work for you. If you like some of this stuff, you know, obviously you just kind of edit it, make it your own. Um, <clears throat> and so, and then, you know, it's gone through like 10 beats from the uh the adventure the original adventure hook the background <clears throat> some things that are going on behind the scenes that the players don't know about and then like some things that happen in the tunnels and so on and so forth right but um i'm just gonna i'm gonna pick one of these other ones uh cursed street performers it doesn't sound too bad. Magical Heist at the British Museum. Um, let's go with number one. Um, I'm just going to say, okay, here we go. Can you tell me more about the unruly Thames? What are some plot points that happen along the way? Certainly, let's expand on the unruly Thames adventure. Background. And it actually, it takes longer than usual, I've noticed. Like, it takes ChatGPT longer than it normally does to, like, I don't know, look up something on the internet. Um, because I think it's trying to be creative. So, just, let's see, why are these, why are these spirits being unruly in the tubes, or on the Thames? Reports of floods in, in unusual areas, certain districts along the flames, the, the Thames, the water level is rising rapidly. Magical disturbances are detected. Upon reaching the infected area, affected areas, the players encounter water elementals wreaking havoc. And so, in Rivers of London, um, the characters have some innate magical abilities, so they would be able to kind of detect these spirits more than the, the average layperson. Um, so what? So what I'm going to do now? Because I do, I like, I kind of like this, or at least I think it's a solid start, right? Is I'm just going to copy all of this, and then I'm going to put it into um, my uh, my notion. Call it elementals of the themes. And so ChatGPT does know it knows what the IP is. You know, it says, oh, Rivers of London, written by Ben Aronovich with such and such characters. And um, <clears throat> it knows, like, if I say, write me an adventure for this game, it knows what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to put a couple tags on it. I'm just going to say Rivers of London. It's an adventure, and then it's raw AI. So I know if I want to go back to that later and edit it, then I've got a solid start, right? So that's that's how, oh, ChatGPT does it. And then you can see like over here, I've got pretty much all of this stuff is about either like Delta Green or Call of Cthulhu. Like there's a lot of it. Um, so there's, but there's, there's other options like, um, uh, there's there's chatbots, right? So say that you wanted to to play an play an RPG with a chatbot, you can do that, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you one. I'm not actually gonna get into it. Yo Dio. Eh. So Yo Dio has like a filter problem. Um, it is a um, it's an AI art generator, and then they have like not safe for work content on there. Like if you want to make an AI waifu, in every sense of the word, you can do it through Yogayo, and um, and then you know they you can do not safe for work AI art and stuff like that. They call theirs the tavern, but the thing is is that there's they have a filter problem where there's there's tons of like explicit content that is like not filtered so i'm not going to go on to that and show you that because it's there's just going to be like all kinds of really explicit stuff like in your face 
So knowing that, right, they need to put an option on there to kind of check a box and say, show me this, you know, or don't show me this. And like, you can do that with this, with the, the characters. Like I tried it, like say that I wanted to do a, a cyberpunk RPG, right? And I wanted to, um, but I, I wanted to have like violence in it. And then, you know, it would possibly like romance or whatever between the characters. Um, you can do that with the, with the filters off, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you much more of that because it's like, it's, there's definitely going to be some really explicit stuff like right away without me logging in or checking off any kind of box or anything like that. Right. But, um, uh, so, you know, if you want to do that, you could play out a scenario, like you could take one of these types of scenarios and then you could make a character who is like your your uh teammate you know or like your your companion and then you can run through the adventure and then you could kind of like feel out the the world or whatever right and that's what this is all about this is all about using ai to as a writing tool um to do some of the heavy lifting for you or to just give you ideas and inspiration, right? So one of my problems as far as writing goes is writer's block, right? And I think it's for, I think that's everybody. Um, so say that, let's see, what's one that I liked the, um, I liked the idea, where is it? Oh, here we go. Um, I had like a, a good seed for a, for an adventure, right? But I kind of got, I just hit a wall with it, right? Or something happened. I just, I never got past the, um, the like initial blurb or whatever, right? So pseudo write is kind of, it's like chat GPT in that it's, you know, it will help you write, but it's for writers. And in that sense, it's on steroids. It's like a very beefy, very beefy version of, of chat GPT. Um, it's not free. It is like a subscription thing. Um, I was just, I was trying it out. Right. And, um, the, uh, um, when I was trying it out, I have spent like a thousand or I have a thousand words left. So I've already burned through thousands of words just trying it out because I was, I put it through its paces and it's kind of impressive, like what it can do. And it's impressive how much stuff it churns out. Um, cause it was trying to write me a whole book. Uh, so basically um what we what what this what this does is that you can um you can just put in your writing right and then there's another there's a, a number of things that you can do with that so i can say i can just put this down right and then immediately when i put it down this is i'll just read it to you um so when white settlers first came to castle rock the local blackfoot apache were happy to let them settle and trade in the area, they did tell them to stay away from one area, the site of a massive burial ground, where almost a whole generation of children were wiped out by a mysterious disease many years ago. When they settled there anyway, the Blackfoot sent a war party, massacring whole families until no one was left standing, or so they thought. One young girl managed to hide and get, to get away to tell the others what had happened. This led the settlers to organize a militia and to carry out their own um, uh, other horrible massacre. Since then, the area has gained a reputation for being incredibly haunted and or cursed. Fast forward to 1892, when it becomes an amusement park, but mysterious deaths keep occurring, and mostly children as well, including a horrible decapitation by a rickety roller coaster, and it gains a reputation for one of the most haunted places in America. This is how I write. Um, 
Fast forward again to 2020, when the park is in complete disrepair and the attendance almost ceases due to the pandemic and the park goes out of business. Then in 2023, an extreme haunted house attraction opens on the fairgrounds or on the park grounds for all of October, but on the last night of Halloween, things get a little too extreme. So this was like, I was going to run this on Halloween. Didn't end up doing it. Just something, something happened. So what I can say is I can plop down my idea, my adventure seed, right? I can tell it to rewrite it or I can tell it like, um, can you describe the, the amusement park? What does it look like? Or I can say brainstorm. And I think that this is kind of the most useful of these because it will just say, oh, you have writer's block. Here's some ideas, right? Um, so let's see, plot points. Let's do plot points. Um, well, that's not, that's not quite doing what I want it to. I think I have to, I might have to do more of the like story, story Bible kind of thing. So th this is getting more into the guts of, of what this does, right? So, um, first off, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to plop it down into the story Bible and I'm going to put it into here. Um, and then we're going to call, we're going to set it up. I'm going to give it a genre and I'm going to call it super, uh, supernatural detective, detective story. with horror elements, right? And then um, I've already done this for, for another one, for a different project. So I'm going to, I'm gonna copy some of my characters from this one. Uh, where's my characters? Okay, so Kareen, um, yeah, I only put a couple, couple of characters in here and then I told it, can you make me some more characters that fit in with this group? And it did a really good job, did a great job. So I'm going to copy these, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll read these to you in a second. Uh, go back into this one and put these into the characters. So I have 700 words to describe my characters. Um, so these are these are sort of kind of ripped off from Rivers of London, um, but they're Americans, you know, because I've never been to, to Europe. Um, I've been to Asia and the Americas and uh, plan on going to Europe someday, but um, basically it's a lot easier for me to run a game somewhere where I know, right? Uh, so, Corrine Jones, private detective, 32 years old, Newton Newtonian magic apprentice. Corrine grew up in Detroit, and she, when she, since she was young, she has been plagued by visions of things that people told her weren't there. But it turns out that what she was seeing were ghosts, and she's highly attuned to the magical energy of a location. She's able to get vivid visions of things that happened at recent crime scenes. She studied criminal justice at a trade school and joined Detroit PD at the young age of 22, 22. However, she was even younger when she had her daughter at 17, and the father is no longer in the picture, but it's probably for the best. She was determined to find justice for the victims that she could vividly see when she was a bright-eyed fresh recruit, and rose quickly through the ranks of Detroit PD, making detective in the homicide division with a high case, case clearance rate due to her gifts. But now she has joined a detective agency that specializes in strange occurrences because she can get more done outside of Detroit PD than inside, although she still has a few connections on the inside. She is still an idealist, though, who seeks justice for victims. Um, Morgan Orton, university graduate student and teacher's aide, 25 years old, 
folk magic apprentice. Morgan was taking classes at Columbia University in New York when he was approached by someone on campus trying to recruit for a martial arts class that combined Brazilian jiu-jitsu, capoeira, and what sounded like some hokey spiritualism linked to an African religion popular in Brazil called uh, um, candomblé that involved drum, drums and the worship of slave ancestor spirits. However, after attending several classes, he became fascinated with both the religion and the martial arts aspects. After some time, he managed to break into the inner circle, despite being Caucasian, and that's where he learned about folk, folk, uh, tribal folk magic, including black magic like Vodo, Vodau. Um, and so, you know, you're getting like a, a common theme, right? Everybody has some kind of brush with the supernatural or whatever and they're kind of recruited into a scooby-doo style adventure um, gang right so um i can tell it to rewrite my characters i like my characters i think they're pretty good um and i can say uh style so if I say, if I say match, match my style, I can just copy my blurb, right? And I can say match my style and then plop the, my blurb in there. And then it's gonna analyze how I write. Um, and then, um, let's see. So tone and mood. The overall tone of the piece is dark and ominous. With a fear of foreboding and danger, the mood is eerie and unsettling with a feeling of dread and unease pervading the narrative. Um, POV. The story is told in third person per limited with a focus on the experiences and perspectives of the characters involved in the events. Um, it's an RPG. There's not going to be... The players are going to be doing a dialogue. Tense. The story is, is told in the past tense with a sense of retrospection and reflection on events that have occurred, vocabulary. Um, so um, I might copy this. I just copy it for for myself and put it somewhere. Put it in my in my notion for now. Um, so so I'm just gonna tell it to uh, summarize my style in so many words, right? Uh, and insert that. Well, you went over. Let's see, dark, ominous tone, eerie, unsettling mentor, past tense, descriptive, descriptive language. Short, punchy sentences and slow pacing, sparse, effective dialogue, informal speech patterns, current themes of death, violence, and horror, settings the backdrop of colonization and conflict. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it just kind of summarized my style. Um, and it needs all this because it's going to try and write me up the book. It's going to start coming up with beats of this story, and then it's going to say, okay, let's write the first chapter. Um, so, let's see, generate an outline. Uh, so, basically, I'm not sure that there's quite enough in here. I think it kind of needs more information, because it's just going to say, Okay, here's your here's your characters. Here's the, um, here's like what she told me, and then here's how I can do something with your characters in the story. Um, but then you know I can say, um, like, put more, put more characters in this, like. I want the game to be for six players, 
um, maximum, so I need six characters, right? Um, and then this, you know, because it's only two characters, it could kind of turn into like a buddy cop, like salt and pepper thing, or it could be, um, I don't know, um, romance. Just about there. Okay, so it looks like the story Bible is done. Um, and so now it says, all right, let's write the first chapter. But I want to see what it came up with for beats. Um, and then this is where you kind of get to edit it, right? Or, I mean, you're uh, brainstorming with it, right? Um, so chapter one, introduction. Karen Jones, private detective and Newtonian apprentice, magic apprentice in Detroit, is introduced while investigating a crime scene. She experiences the vision of the victim's death, revealing her supernatural abilities. Her background as a single mother and former PD detective is explored. Um, and these are just like, these are, this is introducing the characters and kind of like talking about you know what they what they do so if you wanted to just trim this down and say no i just want i just want you to write this like what happens at this point and then this point because i already know what my characters are you know i don't need i don't need you to introduce my characters and tell me like i don't need all this dialogue you can do that right um in fact i should have i should have said up here um uh, role-playing game adventure for up to six players, right? Should have done that. Um, but so, I mean, th this does cost money, but this is like, this is the part of the Okay, I've used up all of my AI words. Um, but I can show you I can show you what some of what it started to do with the other story that I started. Actually, okay, I want to read I want to read some more of this kind of what it what it did right of these like story beats. Um, call to action despite her reservations about the supernatural elements of the case, Gran decides to take it on. Driven and fire desire for justice and curiosity about the magical world. Okay, it's saying that Morgan is her mentor and he's like 10 years younger than her, so I'm not sure. But this is where I can go in and I can change it and I can say, no, um, Morgan is her friend. He, you know, they, they know each other through this uh, underground of, of people who know about the magical world or whatever, right? Um, I think that maybe the other one is a little bit better because I gave it a little bit more to chew on, a little bit more to work with. So let's let's look at that one. So this one I kind of uh, I kind of gave it a little bit more to work with, like I I told um. When I ran my first game of this, I said that basically the players were a group of ghost hunters and urban explorers who um, they have a, a YouTube channel and then they all have day jobs. Like some of them are detectives, some like one is a physician, one is a con artist, you know, or whatever, or reformed um, burglar or something like that. And, um, they all work together as ghost hunters at night and urban explorers and their um, their goal is to help people that have been touched touched in by the supernatural in ways that they didn't like um, in their in their no-no place um, so the you know I, I gave it a little bit a little bit more to chew on right so I said that they being YouTubers that 
they were watching their own stuff you know like youtube knew that they were making this kind of content they ended up in the algorithm and then the algorithm started trying to shove this supernatural hokey stuff down their throats but some of it's real right um and they see this video of this very charismatic cult leader who has this large following and then she does this levitation trick where she just levitates off the ground in front of all of her followers and it's on youtube right and um they start looking into her story a little bit and uh, it turns out that she has this kind of scientology type cult compound right and you know i was just having fun with it and it started to come it started to write a pretty a pretty good book it started to actually write a pretty damn good book um <laughs> it's so <laughs> so there this you know this this goes over the synopsis and then i put in my characters and then let's see what did i i think i just said all i said as far as um like adding beats you know i went in and i changed some things like um chapter one introduce Curran jones as a supernatural detective working with a detective agency that specializes in strange occurrences um like i went in and i changed the outline right i told it um n no that's not that's not good like this is what actually happened and uh but let's go let's go through some of this right so call to action so digging deeper into elizabeth's past corinne uncovers all sorts of strange crimes that elizabeth was connected to before becoming a so-called spiritual leader and this is not the first cult that she's become attached to despite warnings from her colleagues at detroit pd about the dangers of dealing with cults corinne is determined to uncover the truth behind elizabeth's claims and her potential connections to an, to the evil to an evil entity um and less than help corinne meets with her friend megan or Meg, morgan orton an experienced folk magic apprentice and occult researcher who helps her to identify the potential powerful entity controlling elizabeth during the investigation morgan shares his knowledge on various supernatural practices including black magic and how it can be used for sinister purposes um so you know it just goes through all these beats of these things that are happening in these chapters right and then um and it wrote two chapters for me. Uh, <laughs> so let's go to chapter one. Um, begin the chapter with a visit, vivid description of Corinne's detective agency, emphasizing the strange occurrences where that, that they specialize in. So, you know, it's giving you the beats it's saying, all right, this is, this is where we should start. I think that it did generate some of this and then I went in and edited it. So I edited, edited some of it. Did some of this last night. I'm not a lot of sleep, but um, I think this is really cool, personally. And the book that it started to write is actually really good. It's, it's pretty enjoyable to read. Um, so let's see. Develop Corinne's character by showcasing her determination and empathy towards... Okay, yeah, so she gets approached by... A family member who um, has a daughter or a, a family that has a daughter that's in this cult and she's completely cut off contact with them and they're really worried about their daughter so they hire the hire the um, detective agency to look into her they just want to know if she's alive you know if they can just get pictures of her or something like that so they try to infiltrate this um, cult as potential cultists right which is something that they would absolutely do that is something that my my players would 100 percent absolutely do no question <laughs> um but they get caught they get spotted as because they're like supernatural youtubers who try to like debunk 
stuff and somebody recognizes him. Elizabeth has a security team, you know, and they get caught, they get out alive. Something, again, something that my, if my uh, players would absolutely 100% do, right? Um, but, you know, then, then we started to get into the nitty gritty of like, what's actually happening with this cult? Like, who is this supernatural entity? And what, what is the end game? And I almost don't want to spoil it because it's pretty good. But, um, but anyways, so say that you, say that you, you know, like I've, I've, um, oh, and you know, like, again, like these, these things we can go in and then we can, like, we can highlight this. I can say, uh, the sign hanging on the door of Corinne's detective agency. And then I can say, oh, can you describe this? Like, what's the sign look like? And then, or I mean, what well, did? It already says it right there. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the that the writing is going to be super good. It did try to copy my style. So, okay, I'm curious. Um, the sign hanging over the door of Corinne's detective agency read, Unsolved Mysteries and Unexplained Phenomena in Ornate, in ornate Antique Lettering. Upon entering, one was greeted by a room draped in shadows with only a few candles casting their flickering light upon the cluttered surfaces of wooden shells and ancient looking artifacts. The very air seemed to hunt with an otherworldly energy as if the veil between this world and the next was thinner here. Cases of haunted houses, cursed jewelry, and spectral encounters lined the walls interspersed with, I, I am enjoying this. I'm actually enjoying this. I <laughs> think this is pretty good. And this is before I've edited any of this. You know, I haven't touched this. Um, the uh, it's dispersed interspersed with newspaper clippings of mysterious disappearances and unsolved crimes it was as though the darkness that lingered on the edges of human understanding had pooled together within these four walls waiting for someone to make sense of it all like i i'm actually i think this is quality i think it's pretty damn good i'm enjoying it if i'm enjoying it then it's good enough for me um you know, it's not Shakespeare, but hey. So, okay, but let's say that you, you know, you you really like this and then you want to try it out, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna buy it, right? Um, let's see. So if we go over here to the membership plans, um, 90,000 words a month. For twenty-five dollars, or ten dollars a month for thirty thousand words, I think that I probably burn through three thousand words in a few hours. So thirty thousand words would be like probably like I'm gonna say rough guess that's like ten hours of writing. So, or, yeah, maybe like around there, maybe around 10 hours of writing. So if you do more than 10 hours of writing a month, then you might want to go for the professional version, right? But like 10 bucks a month, and then you, or I think this is, is this, this is for the yearly. So, okay, yeah, if we do the monthly thing, then it's $19 a month if you just wanted to try it out. Mm. It's a little expensive, I guess. Um, and then $10 a month if you do a year, so that's $120. But, I mean, I'm sure that most people, like, I know for a fact that most Americans spend more, more than $10 on coffee. Like, a lot of people spend that on coffee a day. Um, but so yeah, those are some options, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, I think that's going to be it, you guys. And I hope that you thought this was interesting or cool or entertaining. <laughs> I think it's all three. Uh, but yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.